What's up everyone? Welcome to Pinoy Bounce. I'm your host for tonight, Ingrid May, along with Mr. Marky Mark and Mr. PJ. How's it going, guys? Awesome. I'm good, I'm good. good. We're here for part two. I'm excited. Part two, let's talk, let's <laughs> talk. Well, we're here for part two with, with Mr. Alex Kabogna, and how are you doing again? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. Thank you for having me again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's continue with um, what we were we were talking about before we ended the the, the part one. So you're talking about the new generation. So let's talk about the projects that you've been recently um, with your cousin, right? Just coaching and just the development. So can you just talk about how you've been doing that in the states and wherever else that you've been, you know, training kids? We're involved with Pelab Nation, and shout out to my my co-founder and actual founder, uh, my uh, and the mastermind behind all these. Uh, uh, social media stuff is uh, Chris Gopez. Um, we've been doing this for the last two years, two and a half, three years. Pandemic slowed us down a little bit, just like anything else pandemic has done. But, uh, you know, we're just working with kids, trying to bridge a gap, making, you know, making their gap to become a professional or play in the Philippines a lot, a lot easier. Uh, we're giving them the tools you know, like just like anything else, like in a standardized test, most most tryouts are standardized and it's for all formality. So we're just going to give you like these like little snippets of what they do, what we do in the Philippines, what could you expect? And and it's going to be, it's not going to be like, there's not going to be a lag. So it's going to be like real time what they expect, you know? And we're working in Canada too. Shout out to Coach Still Ray out there. Select. Mm. Uh, yeah, we're working. We're working on. Uh, we're working on. We're, we just signed. We not not signed, but like we're just doing like a. We finished with Phil UK. Uh, we're doing Phil Dubai, so we're doing a lot of things. It's not just. And, and you know what? I just wanted to share with you guys. It's not necessarily just about basketball. I noticed. Uh, we're, There's we're, athletes. We're, we're fi- yeah, we're finding a lot of talent that needs to be pushed to. You know, well, on my side, I'm working with the Philippine Olympic Committee. And once we get that, once we bridge that gap between the Philippine Olympic Committee and then with other athletes, you know, tennis, with Football. wrestling, boxing, yeah. track. Yeah, everything yeah. under the sun, under the umbrella of sports we're trying to do. Because, you know, Filipinos, they just don't play basketball. They play they play all the sports. So, I mean, it's just so – I'm just fortunate – and the people that play basketball are just fortunate that people in the Philippines are in love with basketball. It's the culture. I'm, it's just the culture. But we're, we're I mean, we're actually, uh, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in talks with some agencies over here for acting. Uh, you know, one of my close cousins, uh, Chris Esteban, he was in the first ever Starstruck. If you guys can look this up, Starstruck GMA. Mm-hmm. He was with Christine Reyes. He was, so we're finding actual talent. That's not just sports related. We're actually finding talent, actual talent that we could go here. And we have connections with the GMA and all these brands. And, you know, I was signed with Viva for a little bit with the agency. So we're, we're, we're trying to put Filipino Americans, not just Filipino Americans, Filipino Canadians, Filipino with any Oh, Filipino International, basically. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, how did the release. inspiration come about to start the Lamination Select? Now, going branching off to Phil Can, Phil UK, Phil Dubai. Like, where did the inspiration come from? Was it based on like you know your difficulty bridging yourself going into the PBA, or is it just trying to develop more exposure that like you know Filipinos haven't received at all from these from these past de- decades? I don't want to say we're in reinventing the wheel. We're definitely not reinventing the wheel. This has been going on for a long time. Okay. It's just where, you know, when you're young, you got a lot of energy, you got a lot of time, you got a lot of stuff to push. And for us, we just put in the work of just trying to push everybody out to, you know, when you're doing this, it's not for you. It's not for me. It's not for me. You know, I tell kids, you know, I'm hard on you. It's not for me. If you want to make it, you know, if you want to have, if you want to do this for a living, if you want to be a professional athlete or if you want to be a professional an actor that gets paid for what they're doing yo they put work in their discipline you know and and coach chris is a little bit more lenient you know he he does more of the you know he's he's kind of nicer we do the good cop bad cop and he knows this but i'm i'm bad cop because you know i'm in it i'm in it i'm in it i can see where it's at i see the people work tirelessly in their disciplines here and, you know, they work all day, 
you know they stay in the they stay in the media they stay they stay behind the scenes all day they look for stories so I, I get it I get it and I want I want to push that to the people that's trying to make it we're branching off to beauty pageants as well uh, we have PJ, something in North yeah yeah we got we got a PJ PJ right here for the beauty PJ? pageant oh. yo we need a PJ on the catwalk I got, I got the lava walk man <laughs> the lava walk oh yeah. damn I would show but then uh, I don't want you to uh, fall in love you love. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Alex. And I'm in. <laughs> uh, Alex, from your experience with Chris, when you guys created all these programs and organizations, what are some of the things that you discovered about you know, the talent and some of the things that you uh, found out as you kept building and growing these organizations? There's a lot of talent. There's a lot of talent. Like I said a while ago, a lot of Filipino now is just the, the game is elevated to if you don't go, if you're Filipino and you're balling and you don't make a D1, it's like, Wow, why didn't you make a D1? Before, I told, like I told you before, I know only one or two people that made D1 and the Filipino community. So the talent is a lot better now. Uh, I know some of the guys in my batch will be like, no, the talent's not better now. We can just better say it's, we can say it's now, more exposed now, if anything, because of Yeah, exactly, the exactly, media. exactly. You know, oh. what my MJ said, all that move, the million dollar move and, you know, a two cent finish, that's not going to work. Mm-hmm. So yeah. we're we're here trying to make that million dollar move of yours into some thousand air finish. <laughs> <Not a million. laughs> you know, we're, trying to, we're trying to make that happen, but uh, there's a lot of talent now, and we're just trying to push it. And mm-hmm. you know, our inspiration comes from our experiences. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know you guys are probably going to ask that. Or you ask that, Kanina. Our, you know, if you guys don't know, Coach Chris came out here same time I did, and you know, not everybody not everybody can make it that's just how it is but you get the experience you get the life you get the lifestyle and you could push your wisdom and knowledge to to make to make it somebody else's wisdom if they want it um like i said not everybody's gonna be you know mark Nagiwa is one in a million jimmy alapag is a one in a million player you know and that's hard i, I mean yo you you might as well play the lottery to become that guy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, but with Finlam Nation, with us, uh, with Finlam, the stuff that we're doing is hopefully we could bridge the gap. And it doesn't. It's not one in a million shot for you. Maybe it's one in ten thousand. And you know what? From one in a million to one, one in ten thousand, I'll percent. take that. Yeah, mm-hmm. for I'll sure. take that. Take that probability take that, yeah. no, no matter what. <laughs> That's true. Take oh, that yeah, I'll going. take that probability easy. Yo, one in a million is too hard, yo. <laughs> Making it to the NBA is one in like a billion. Yeah, <laughs> so, it's true. Or, or one in 200, 226 million like Giannis. That's, that, that, that's a probability. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like nobody might make that. But uh, with the experiences that we had is, is definitely um, – uh, what carries us and what gives us the the strength and the energy to just try to help out you know it's it's about them it's not about us it's not about us it's about them they got the talent we're just using our 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 network as leverage but yo when you got the talent you know the, the cream rises to the top it don't matter mm-hmm. oh alex uh my curiosity on the the aspects of talent maybe to be specific about it for kids that are watching and what specific aspect, the tangible and intangible skill set that you feel are the most transferable or the most key, uh, important things that could really help them excel playing professionally or playing in the Philippines? So like or maybe the tangible and intangible aspects that you feel strongly will help them. Uh, well, uh, let, let me go with some tangibles because those are something that could be measured. Yeah. Um, you know, you got to make your shots. You got to put in, you got to, if you're, you got to stay in the gym three hours a day, and that, that just has to be the thing. I mean, some guys are talented enough that they don't have to do it, but like I said, like, yo, your talent, you know, sometimes it, it's a yearly thing. You know, what, 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 what's evident is how much you put in this year, and it's, it shows next year, right? Mm-hmm. So you have to put the time in. I would suggest for kids, uh, what I would tell them all the time is you got to work on your athletic ability. You got to work on your athletic ability. 
Um, I know, like what you just mentioned, intangibles. A lot of kids, you know, a lot of parents come to me like, oh, he knows how to play the game. He knows how to do this. And I just say, what's his athletic ability like? You know, like, could he run? You know, we have measurements, obviously. Could he, how fast could he run 40? Could he dunk? Could he do all these speed tests? Because, you know, the intangibles, you mga, you mga brainiacs or like, you know, mga IQ, IQ. Yo, you won't even know. Like, if I was a, if I, was, I'll just give you guys some real time stuff right now. How would I know what your intangibles are if you can't show me tangibles? Like, I know that's kind of hard, difficult for people to hear because I'm not the most athletic guy in the bunch. Let, let, let me, let me get out, get that out there. But that's something that you work on and you can work on. You know, that's something you can work on. So I would suggest kids to work on their athletic ability and, try to compete at the highest level. Like what, what Ingrid May said, you know, exposure. You, you don't just play with Filipinos. You can play with other ethnicities to expose the level of athletic ability that you're at, that you're in, and maybe you could get it up to, up to par. So, yeah, and I hope your, that answers your question. Your role with the uh, Gilis uh, national team, not, not only just for basketball, but, I, but you said you were on the board of Gilis, right? Um, what's the what's what what's the process of our like what the, what are the paperwork like uh, how are they looking oh. at Filipinos internationally like do you need a certain process to really play for uh, to represent the Philippines how does that work and what do you recommend for oh. those international Filipino hmm. players that want to go into representing for the Philippines okay um, good question um, I'm not necessarily I'm not on the board for Gilas Gilas is a, its own entity that's basketball now oh, that's, that's basketball, basketball. Gilas, Gilas is all basketball I played for Gilas and I've been in their system but as a whole because like I said basketball in the Philippines is like a religion mm -hmm. so they have their own entity mm -hmm. of it making and making the Olympic and that's Gilas that's their okay. that's their brand that's their brand so you're on the so Olympic what board I'm, the, yeah, yeah what, okay. uh, what I'm what I'm what I'm in in talks with with the Lab Nation is the Philippine Olympic Committee that's all the sports that are not basketball mm -hmm. like yo, I'm I'm trying to tell them like yo there's a good wrestler here in the States, maybe he can get on with you guys. Like, and what he needs, what he needs is he needs his documentations of being, having his passport before 16, before he was 16, getting all his, uh, his mom's birth certificate, the NSO of his mom, his dad to show Filipino lineage. Those are the first two that needs to be, that needs to be addressed ASAP. You know, you got if you don't have your Filipino passport, when you're before 16, maybe we could go with the whole lineage of your mom before she was married. She was married to an American, maybe before she was married, before you were born, was she Filipino? We got to get those paperwork in ASAP. Those are the first two things. And we'll work from there. Usually that's difficult, huh? Because usually when, like, if you're Filipino, you're Filipino and, you, and you're second generation in the States, but you're Filipino still, you don't, you don't know all these paperwork, where they're coming from. It's hard to, it's hard to get. It's, it's hard to uh, manifest these, these paperwork, especially if somebody tells you you need it in, like, a week or two weeks. How could you do that? You, know, you can't just, you know, you can't even look. Wait, what? Like, dude. So that's, that's what we do. We don't just... We don't just do all this athletic stuff. We want the parents. It's like, you know, we have a seminar for parents when they come in. Yo, we're not doing all this, all this basketball stuff. If, you're, you, don't, if you don't do your end, you know, if you don't do it. And, and, and I get it. I get it. My mom was very busy back in the day. She was a nurse, you know, like typical mom, all moms. She was QRMP. <laughs> so she was a nurse and she was working 12-hour shifts and she, didn't, she had no time. She had no time to get all these paperwork in and all that stuff. So I was just very fortunate that, my, that the agent that I had worked with me. But there's a lot of kids that are fortunate like that, you know. Mm -hmm. There's not. So Finland Nation is like, yo, we'll do that. We'll help you in the States. The consulate will, will be – actually, the consulate will, at one of our showcases, the Philippine consulate was there just to educate just to educate the parents. Because, you know, you, you know some, some parents, you know, it's hard to come by. You know, that's just being real. So the $175 is more on educational purposes on 
Philippine consulate. They're going to be there. You could talk to somebody that that you won't necessarily talk to, and they could school you on, educate you on, on what paperwork that you need.